body piercing industry as a whole is heavily, heavily invested in looking after the client. That's their main priority. The person who sits in the bedroom or in the kitchen firing holes in people is after one thing and one thing only, and that's money. You've got two options, haven't you? People who are getting pierced, they want a professional. Act like one. What I'm going to be taking you through now is the studio and the basic setup of it. Basic says you need to push towards having a cool, calm environment. If you've got thrash colour music on, it's going to get you nowhere. The client's going to be coming in already hyped up. By the time you get them on the couch, they're just going to sit there and faint straight away before you've even touched them. Calm them down. Have a calm, cool environment. Clinical as well because that's the actual impression and that's the actual standard you need to be striving for. Just to give you a nice guideline around the studio, you're going to be looking at your bench, your bench rolls. You've got gloves both sides because at some stage you might actually be working on the other side of the bed. You've got all your jewellery you need at hand, all your forceps at hand, all your needles already pre-packed, your sharp spots and your station and basically anaesthetics if you actually choose to actually use these products. The actual station itself should actually carry every single product you want to carry that piercing out. What we're also going to be teaching you today is a technique we've refined for actually stopping piercings bleeding. How it basically works is like this. When everyone usually does a piercing, the piercing and the jewellery are exactly the same calibre and size, or sometimes people will actually pierce a lot bigger than the jewellery that's necessary to be putting in. Obviously giving your body plenty enough time, time to let blood come steaming out of it. What we do is actually pierce it, the blade is actually smaller than the actual jewellery we stick in, and the process of putting the jewellery in the cannula is what stretches it. It all sounds very complicated I know, but it breaks down like this. If you're going to actually do a 1.6mm barred piercing, you're actually going to use a 1.7mm needle. The actual blade in the needle is 1.5mm. When you actually put the jewellery in, slightly stretching the cannula to the size, it'll actually take it up to the size of one7 thus sealing the piercing by 0.2mm. It sounds very complicated, but it's a technique that works, we've refined, and it is exceedingly good as a job. You will find that hardly anybody will bleed. Right, I'm going to show you this technique a bit more close up and a bit more refined. Taking a 1.7mm needle and a 1.6 piece of jewellery, when the piercing is actually carried out, you actually reintroduce the needle slightly withhold it back onto itself so that that's there acting as a, acting as a strengthener for the actual process. Put the piece of jewellery in the end. As you can see it's slightly, very smallly enlarged the area. Withdraw the needle, discard it, run it through and you'll find that it will actually seal the piercing. What we're now going to do is do two eyebrow piercings and actually demonstrate this for you. As you can see here we've got two piercings, two eyebrows exactly the same piercings. I've got over here, I've an orange, over here I've got a grey. First thing we'll do is we'll stick the orange piercing in. As you can see we're already in a situation where we need to control bleeding straight away. Actually hold that and just jumping in front of the camera if you could just take the patch off for me there you go, it doesn't take much to actually work out the difference in the actual style and the techniques and how it actually works and benefits the client as well as your studio. Right, there you go, the actual technique is exceedingly well proven just with that example that we did. There are a couple of actual differences in certain piercings where you can and can't use this. The only one we've ever found is navel piercings. There is a great reduction in actual bleeding in regard to this piercing anyhow so personally I would recommend an orange. Your client will dance all over the bed and the concept of trying to do refined, stylized work with someone who's trying the best to actually get out the door while still getting pierced is probably not the best way to actually go forward. 
Also, the tongue piercing. It's not a problem with using that technique with tongue piercings. The only thing you do need to remember is, because it actually it's that tight and it tightens the piercings up, you do need to tell the client that if they actually abuse the piercing over the next couple of days, excessive talking, drug abuse, etc, etc, which you shouldn't be doing any output clients or clients, then what will actually happen is the tongue will go black and blue. No, you haven't hit anything major, it's just the fact that the muscle cannot go through its normal activities. Right, what we have here is your clients, we're just going to run through some of the basic piercings that are available on the market. There are some other ones, but this particular client carries a fair arraignment of them. You've got the eyebrows of rings, eyebrows of bars, both sides of a nose pierced. You've got your librettes at the bottom. You've also got some extreme light piercing at the top. On the side here, you've got an industrial, inner conch, date at the back there, trigus, tunnels, and various other rings. On the side here, you've got a lot of scaffolding work, tragus, rings, and tunnels again. Internally, we've got a random assortment of tongue piercings as well. Right, now we're going to be doing an industrial. One of the most common causes of industrial rejection is trying to actually carry the piercing through with clamps. What clamps do is actually distort the actual piercing out of alignment so you can't get the natural flow of the bar itself. This actually means we need to actually do this piercing by hand. If you're doing this piercing by hand, you obviously need extreme caution, which as soon as you're dealing with needles, you need any help. Make sure everything's nice and cleaned. And then the bring bar up, just for positioning. Make your lines of where the actual piercing is going to be travelling. Make a go from the top so you've got your exit. And then on the side, so you've got your entry. You've got a nice positive flow of the piercing all the way through there. In regards to the piercing itself, as I was saying before, obviously extreme caution, but do treat each piercing individually. Because in the end, we are actually doing two piercings. Holding the ear gently, just push the bar through. Follow the line straight up and actually jump back out on the top. And there you go, nice and easy. We'll draw the blade. Now, with regards to actually insertion of the jewellery, as I was saying before, treat each piercing as a single one. The needle back in, remove any air that might actually be in the way. Move the needle. And run each piercing on its own. Through. You will get some slight distortion in the ear, but you will actually be stretching the ear into position. You do need a slight amount of space actually left on the bar because you are going to find that the ear is going to swell slightly. There we go. Nice clean piercing. Make sure there's no air actually caught around the ball or anything like that. Cleaning wise, same again. Which is a little salt water. Do be aware if you knock one piercing, it will actually affect the other piercing. Do you actually tell the client it's probably best to avoid actually sleeping on that particular area just until it actually desensitizes.